Hey guys and welcome to Diabetic365 and today we have our diabetic educator Susan who is going to educate us on diabetes supplements and vitamins. Um, you know 26 million people out there are diabetic and almost 30 to 31 percent of diabetics are now using these vitamins or um, all these supplements and also these alternative methods of uh, treating diabetes. So uh, with no further ado, hey Susan how are you? Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. So, Susan, tell us the first question is, before getting started, whether these supplements are good or bad for diabetes, the first question is, there are 26 million people out there, and we have almost 30% of the people using all these um, supplements like chromium, magnesium, omega-3, or cinnamon, or bitter melon, all these different stuff. So, are these, is diabetic is a person with diabetic should be taking this everybody is very individual but people with diabetes of course want to have better blood sugar control so the first line of defense is always proper nutrition medications as prescribed by your physician including insulin and including other medications that might be insulin sensitizing as well as other medications that may not be related to diabetes but may be related to improving your health. So as an adjunct to those therapies, sometimes supplements can be helpful but we want to make sure that we don't take too many of them so that they are harmful for people with diabetes. Uh, okay, so now coming to the individual supplements. Most of the time we keep hearing about chromium and magnesium. So what about them? Well, chromium, of course, got a lot of airplay about 15 years ago when there was a few small studies that came out about showing improved blood sugar control with chromium. And chromium is a trace mineral that we do need and we do have in our bodies and we get through foods like brews, yeast, and meats, and fish. Certain foods do have chromium in it. But since those initial studies back in the 80s, it really hasn't been repeated to show um, a tremendous amount of improvement using chromium. If it, the only people that I do watch with having too much chromium in the, in the diet, and the same is true with magnesium, which we'll speak about in a moment, is people who have kidney issues, which can be true of many diabetics, should not take a large amount of chromium. And in terms of moving on to magnesium, magnesium seems to have a very positive role for people with type 2 diabetes that have a low magnesium level. Mm -hmm. So doctors should routinely look at magnesium level, particularly in people with type 2 diabetes. And in that case, taking 200 to 600 milligrams per day of magnesium may actually improve insulin sensitivity. Again, you have to be very cautious of people with renal or kidney problems. That's important also. Mm -hmm. So uh, coming to this, the next one is uh, omega-3. Omega-3 is quite often taken by people, even non-diabetics, and also it's, okay. good, it's good for your heart. So what about this omega-3, how does it play a um, vital role in uh, patient, uh, with the people with diabetes? You know, omega-3s are great for a lot of people. I do want to start off by saying that omega-3s in a fish oil capsule, I do want to put a little disclaimer out there that there are some people who should not take it. First of all, those people who have an allergy to fish should not take omega-3 in a fish oil supplement. And that sounds simple. But when you hear that everyone is taking something and you go out and take something that you may have a bad allergic reaction to, that's an issue. Mm -hmm. So people allergic to fish should not take omega-3s. People who have a very, who are taking a very strong blood thinner, like Coumadin, mm -hmm. should also not take omega-3 supplements. And the third type of people that should not take it are people who have bleeding ulcers. But generally, we haven't really found improved blood sugar control from omega-3s in people with diabetes. We have found improved triglyceride control. And so since many people with diabetes have elevated triglyceride levels, which are a type of fat in the blood, 
we should they should um, take it. Um, but we have not seen conclusive evidence that it reduces cholesterol, which is very interesting. Certain studies have even shown that it might increase the LDL or the bad cholesterol. But again, more studies need to be taken. And of course, we can get omega-3s from food sources, mm -hmm. like salmon um, and, and walnuts and flaxseed are natural good sources of omega-3s. Omega and most people, they're fantastic supplements. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what about this alpha lipoic acid, uh, which is quite often heard by um, patients with diabetes? So what about that? Do you think that's a good supplement? Um, I think it can be a good supplement because ALA -L -A or alpha lipoic acid is also an antioxidant, which means it protects against cellular damage. There are, uh, you know, there have been a couple of issues with, with ALA. Some people get um, very nauseous from it, and also ALA taken in high dosages can affect iron levels. Mm -hmm. So if you are a person with diabetes who also has an iron deficiency anemia, that might be something that you want to not take, ALA. But it is a really good form of an antioxidant, and some people with type 2 diabetes, again, can improve um, insulin sensitivity. Uh, okay, that's good. So what about ginseng? G-I-N-S-E-N-G. Uh, yeah, ginseng. Um, ginseng, the studies are also a little bit limited, and I think that a lot of the reason some of these studies are limited is there's not a lot of money for the research behind them, and in the future, we may find a lot more good information on it. There was a small study done on taking about three grams of ginseng approximately 40 minutes before a meal, again with type 2, people with type 2 diabetes, mm -hmm. which did show improvement with postprandial or post-meal blood sugar levels. It was a small study. Um, I think that we can see beneficial effects of it perhaps in the future, but to date there's really not that much of solid evidence on it. Oh, okay. So uh, the other two supplements um, are vanadium and glucosamine. Glucosamine, I remember taking it when I had some, um, when I was doing uh, exercise, when I was doing this uh, strength training, I took when I had the knee pains or joint pains. But what about um, vanadium? Is it a good well, supplement for um, people with diabetes? Well, starting with what, what you said about the glucosamine, you're absolutely right. Glucosamine is great for joints and cartilage, right, to keep healthy joint and cartilage. has absolutely shown no benefit on improving um, blood sugar control or glycemic control, so that's interesting. And vanadium, also very limited research, has looked at that and a few other related metals in its family about um, mimicking the effects of insulin, but we've really only seen this in the laboratory. We have not seen this in too many human studies. Mm -hmm. And I think the takeaway from a lot of this is that supplements should, can be and should be an adjunct when it is appropriate for you and discussed with your physician to nutrition and to proper exercise, which we know is the natural way to insulin sensitize our body, um, especially again for people with type 2 diabetes. And always test your blood sugar after you take a supplement and while you're taking the supplement because certain su supplements, especially ALA, have been reported to significantly drop blood sugar levels. Okay. So, so they shouldn't, you shouldn't just think because it's not prescription it won't be forceful. Oh, okay. So coming to the alternative uh, methods of um eating or taking supplements is uh, the natural way, one natural way is which is followed in different countries like um, in China, India is eating bitter melon and also taking cinnamon. So uh, how about that, um, bitter melon and cinnamon? Bitter melon despite its name is actually a vegetable which you can also take in capsule form but you can eat it. I haven't seen it be harmful to anybody. Um, people take it upwards of about 900 milligrams or so of it with, with some beneficial effects anecdotally, which means people say it helps, but I really haven't seen too much proof in that. But it doesn't seem to be harmful. And cinnamon 
There has been some promising research on cinnamon, which is easy to add in your healthy foods, like putting it in your steel-cut oatmeal in the morning, but not going out to the bakery and having a Cinnabon and saying, oh, my nutritionist and diabetes educator said, have cinnamon and then eating it on a pastry. That's, that's not what I'm referring to. But put cinnamon in healthy things like how about having some herbal green tea and adding some cinnamon to it, oh, you know, or baking an apple and adding cinnamon to it. There are really fun things that you're adding it, like I said, to your oatmeal or, oatmeal. or any time during the day. Mm -hmm. Oatmeal. So uh, apart from this, what I've mentioned, do you uh, think any other um, supplements are useful for diabetes? You know, there is some research on polyphenols, which you can find in certain teas and in dark chocolate, which may have some beneficial effects, again, in type 2s, because it can help with insulin sensitizing activity. But all these things together in supplement form, you can also get through food. And I keep going back to, as an educator, that if you don't start with a really good nutrition program, you can, you know, I, I don't want to hear that somebody's eating cookies and Twinkies, but they're taking these things and supplements. Exactly. That's not going to help your, your diabetes improve. So I think as an adjunct therapy, it definitely, definitely deserves exploration. And if it works for you and you work with your CDE and your MD and endocrinologist, it can definitely be very positive and have a positive effect on your blood sugar levels. But keep testing your blood sugar to make sure. Okay, that's very good. So um, to wrap up the interview, so um, the first thing is one needs to check with their educator or also with their endocrinologist before taking these supplements and not oh, just okay. or not just going over the counter and taking them. And uh, um, that's one thing. The second thing is about also the uh, amount of uh, supplements that needs to be taken. So can you throw us a light on that? Right, um, and because the research is not that detailed in certain areas, a supplement, for example, like cinnamon, you're not going to overdose on, on taking cinnamon, but you can overdose on taking something like ALA. So that's why that, that, that needs to be discussed. And a lot of the supplements do interact with medication. Some of them interact with antacids, some with cancer-treating cancer medications, some with heart medications like calcium channel blockers. So you have to really discuss this with your doctor um, to make sure that there are no interactions and with your nutritionist or your certified diabetes educator to make sure there are no food interactions mm -hmm. with what you're taking. Don't just take them because they're touted as natural. Okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you, Susan, for being on the show and sharing your thoughts uh, with all the diabetic community out there. And you have a nice day. Take care. You too. Thank you so much. Thank you, Susan.